Welcome back. I hope you liked that video. As you can see, there were so many people that we interviewed, so many champions, so many losers. Congrats to the champs too. Like, you yes. know, they had new coaches and the players had amazing things to say about each other and that was great to see. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And I said losers, but if you're a loser, make sure you use that as, you know, Motivation. Motivation for exactly. next year. We're going to do something different in this segment. Uh, Marky Mark was very excited. So we'll see what he has in store for us. Marky Mark, what are we going to do right now? All right, we're going to do something really cool because since the season hasn't started, I want to do something really, you know, really different since it's just two of us today. And I want us to do a little bit of off-season analysis, what happened with the teams this off-season. And I want to do some bold prediction. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that if you guys don't know, me and PJ has grew, uh, have grew up together. We met each other in high school and we became best friends through basketball. Yep. So not only did we play, but we watched games together. And because of that love for basketball, Pinot Cross of a came, right? Yeah. So I want to do something different where we're going to see how much in sync we really are in terms of what we know about them being, what we think about it. So I'm going to do some questions and we're all going to answer at the same time. Like now, these questions I've given to him, but we've not, we don't know each other's answers. So now we're going to find out if we're actually in sync. All right, are you ready for this? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. I'm gonna pull out the questions. All right? And we're gonna answer it to each other, okay? Are you ready for this? Yes, let's go. The first question is, we have 30 seconds to answer each one, all right? So, what was the best off-season acquisition? We're gonna do it in three, two, one. What are we, what you ready? We we're gonna say our answer at the same time. Okay, okay. Ready? Yep. Three, two, two one. Ball Boston. George. Oh, Boston's. Okay, then I go? All yeah, right. go. All right. I think, I think Boston had the best offseason because they got Gordon Hayward. They got Kyrie Irving out of nowhere. And I guess just judging on the preseason and how they're working well together and how Kyrie's changed as a player, going from not a one-on-one -on -one player for, in the Cavs to now actually running an offense, passing to a lot of people. It's so smooth, and I think it's so... It, you wouldn't have noticed that it would be a good offseason move until now, but I, I believe that um, they got the best, you know movement of players and I think it's working out for them. Mm. Awesome, awesome. Okay, you? I got, I was gonna actually say Paul George and Carmelo Anthony acquisition. Yeah. So what I think is better is because Boston wise, I know they, they did a lot of great things, but I think the Cavaliers are still the best team. So I think they're not gonna last. I think they're gonna give at least six games or maybe five games at least during the playoffs. Mm -hmm. But what I think about is that putting three superstars together, I know Carmelo's on the downside of his career. Pairing him up with Russell Westbrook, I think they have a chance at least to give Warriors, you know, a challenge because now not only do they have someone that can defend Kevin Durant, they have three people that can score legit one on one in any possession and that can give that can drop thirty or forty on them any night. Mm -hmm. So now Clay and Curry cannot you know, cannot hide defensively against a team like that because now he has to guard Russell Westbrook because now Paul George is a threat and now Klay Thompson has to defend that. Carmelo is a threat now. Um, what's his name? Draymond or Durant has to defend Carmelo and that's why I think it's a better acquisition. Mm -hmm. Next question. Okay, next question. Da -da -ba -ba -ba. What was the worst off-season off acquisition? Off-season acquisition. You ready? Okay. Three, two, one. New York. Charlotte. <laughs> Why Charlotte? I hate Dwight Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Dwight Howard, I don't like you. Like, you is it because of his game or just because of his attitude? I think it's just his attitude. I'm, I'm a positive guy, you know what I'm saying? But like, I don't know. You, you played with the greats. You played with Kobe. Like, and and didn't nothing like him. happened. Exactly. Like, you played Kobe and Nash. That was the big three that was supposed to be the great, like the uprising of Lakers nation. And he ran away from that situation. Yeah. And then now he's with Charlotte. I don't think, well, I'm not... Well, I guess Charlotte. He was even in Atlanta, and like everyone yeah. didn't even want it. Like when he was gone out of Atlanta, everyone was supposedly have happy that he left. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Like he seems like there's something about him off, you know, not related to basketball, but him personally. Yeah, I feel like right. any team that has him. Uh, sorry to say, but like just like the attitude wise, like that yeah. rotten tomato or rotten apple yeah. spoils a, a whole bunch. Yeah, I feel like if if he if they end up losing a lot and Charlotte ends up being not as what they expected to play like then i feel like he's going to be throw on him the towel right and yeah exactly yeah. yeah well i have new york okay. just because of the fact that they drafted someone uh, that is, you know, inexperienced, or we don't know much about him, which is Frank uh, Ninikina, where they could have had Dennis Smith Jr., who everyone thinks mm. is going to win Rookie of the Year. Yeah. And, you know, you've seen him play in the preseason, and he's, you know, he's the real deal. Not only that, but they shipped Carmelo Anthony, 
and they got players that are decent, but not even enough, not even close to what uh, a value of Carmelo Anthony. So I think they're going to be worse, even though everyone thinks that they're going to be better. I think they're going to be worse mm -hmm. than what they are with Carmelo Anthony. And not only that, but they signed Tim Hardaway Jr. on a very expensive contract where they could have had him. They drafted him and let him go, and now he had a good year, and they overpaid him. Overpaid, yeah. Overpaid him, and they still have a bunch of bad contracts, like Joakim Noah's contract. So I think that New York is going to be really bad again, and I think they had a worse <laughs> offseason. It's going to be a bad team. <laughs> bad. Next question. All right, what's the next question? You got less than two minutes left. Who is going to have a breakout season? Which player is going to have a breakout season? You ready? Breakout season? Yeah. Uh, okay. Got it. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Miles Sanders. Sanders. Oh, we're never in sync, man. Why are we best I friends? I thought we were good. <laughs> Why Brandon Ingram? I don't know. I feel like D'Angelo Russell, um, I don't know, I'm not going to say hog the ball. Or like, I feel like it's a new Lakers team, and I feel like they have, they're looking at which roles each of them are playing. And I feel Brandon Ingram is going to fit into that role of a scorer, especially since Ball is there now to give and distribute the, the basketball. I think, and he's been working on his game, but he also grew. Right? Yeah, he's like seven feet now. Yeah, he's seven feet. He's playing a small four. I think mm. about that's Durant height. Mm, and absolutely. that's what Durant's playing right now, seven feet forward. So that's why they see him as, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I think Brandon is going to have a breakout like career, career wise and everything. He's going to have someone that's going to feed him the ball, Alonzo, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Well, I have, I have Miles Turner just because of the fact that he was already good. But the fact that he was capped by the way uh, the way paces were uh, designed, which is for Paul George. And now that Paul George is gone, they basically built around him now with the kind of players that are, you know, designed to feed him the basketball and to put him in the great situation. And I think he's going to have a breakout season because no one else in the Pacers can score mm. aside from Victor Oladipo. We have 30 yeah, seconds left. Last true. question. Last, what's the last question? Let's here? see. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Who is going to have a, the most disappointing season? Okay. Ready? Yeah. Three. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. Carmelo false. Anthony. <laughs> oh, I said false. Okay, go. I don't like it. Oh, I just saw a video about his free throw form. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all ugly. <laughs> it's all ugly. <laughs> Who can shoot that? So I, I, I don't know. How can you be a high, high how can you be a point guard or like a very um, influential uh, all-star if you can't be clutch in a situation and you can't shoot free throws? I, it's, it's a thing that you could probably improve, but... I don't he know, was this, good. This season, I think what happened was like, yeah. his shot was good, and he shot really good. Yeah. Uh, it's just his free throw was just really bad. Okay, quick, you you answer Mine that question. Mine is Carmelo because if he doesn't adjust and he doesn't you know adjust his game and the way his mindset is in terms of dominating the ball and hogging the ball, stopping you know just literally the flow of the game, mm. I don't think it's gonna work with him there. And I think he's I, and I think he's too, he's so set in his ways just because of his age now. Mm. He's been playing for so long in the NBA that it's hard to. And, you know, change your habit, your routine as a player. And I think that, I don't think he's going to be able to do it. And I think he's going to have a problem adjusting and sacrificing. 